Hey, this is Braden with Pickleball Effect. Today we're gonna to talk about an experiment I did with paddle shapes. When you're shopping for paddles, there's generally two different paddle shapes that you can pick between. You have your wide body or classic shapes, and then you have your elongated shapes. So it's generally known that your wide body and classic shapes are gonna be a little more forgiving, and that elongated shapes are just gonna give you extra reach. But I wanted to explore and better understand how a shape affects the performance of a paddle. So for this experiment, I'm measuring two different things. I want to measure how a shape will influence the spin and power of a paddle. But to perform the test, I couldn't just go grab a bunch of random shapes from paddles in my closet. I needed the exact same paddle in multiple different shapes. So I talked with Selkirk and asked if they would send me all of the shapes in their Vanguard 2.0 series and they graciously said yes. So big shout out to Selkirk for providing the paddles for this test. So here's the paddles they sent me so you know what we're testing. They sent me two classic shapes. So this is their Epic and then their S2. The Epic has a, a longer handle than the S2, but they both share the same classic shape, which is 16 inches long and about eight inches wide. So there's these two. And then they sent three different elongated shapes. So when we're looking at these, this is the, the Mach 6, the Invicta, and then the Omni here is, is here in the back. So these are all elongated shapes. They're about 16 and a half inches long and seven and a half inches wide, but they all have different handle lengths. So the Mach 6 has the longest handle, then the Invicta is in the middle at five and a quarter, and then you have a really short handle with the Omni uh, here in the back. So the only difference in these paddles is the shape. Other than that, they have the same thickness, the same core, uh, everything else is the same. So the controlled variable is the shape. This will give us accurate data when we when we do our tests. Additionally, to make sure we had accurate results, we performed the tests in an indoor court so that things like temperature and wind would not affect the results. So to measure power, we got five brand new X40s and my buddy Joe and I both took five swings with each paddle. We just hit a serve as hard as we could. We didn't count it unless it stayed in play and then took a radar gun and just measured the miles per hour reading for each serve and then took an average. For spin, we did something similar. We got some two-tone balls from Gamma so that we could see the rotations of the ball when we filmed it. Each of us took five swings with each paddle and then we measured the RPMs based off of the video footage. So that was how we performed the tests. Let's go ahead and take a look at the results. So first, let's look at the power readings. When you look at my results in red, it looks like there's a direct correlation between handle length and power. The longer the handle, the more power you can generate. There also seems to be a correlation between power and elongated paddles. When you compare the power reading of the Epic and Invicta, I got more power with the Invicta, though both of those paddles have the same handle length of 5.25 inches. And interestingly, both Joe and I saw a dip in power going from the Epic to the Omni, which I think we can attribute to the Omni's super short handle. However, when you look at Joe's results compared to mine, they are much more scattered. These results confused me at first, and then I realized that Joe is a 3-5 player that is starting to get it into 4-0, and I'm a 4-5 player and just am a little more consistent than Joe is. The takeaway here is that intermediate to lower level players benefit from the larger sweet spot of a wider body paddle like the Epic or the S2 and can actually generate more power with those on average when you take in miss hits. Whereas higher level players who are a little more consistent at hitting the center of the paddle can generate more power with elongated shapes. So between the two of us, there was a 9% increase in power from the S2 to the Mach 6. Now let's look at the spin results. Again, with my results in red, we see a steady increase in spin as the handle and paddle get longer. There seems to be an obvious correlation there. But when we look at Joe's results, they are a bit scattered again. The average RPMs were pretty much the same for the S2, Epic, and Invicta for Joe, but he saw a big decrease with the Omni and an increase with the Mach 6. So from this, we can theorize something similar to the power readings, that intermediate and lower level players won't see a huge difference in spin based on the shape of the paddle, unless you have extreme handle lengths, either long or short, like the Omni or the Mach 6. However, if you're a higher level player, then you'll see an uptick in spin with longer handles and with longer paddles. So between the two of us, we saw a 17% increase in spin from the S2 to the Mach 6, which is pretty significant. There are three main takeaways from this experiment that I think we can all consider when we're buying our next paddle. One, intermediate and lower level players will generally benefit more from a wider shaped paddle when it comes to power. Just because it's more forgiving and on average, you're gonna have more power with a more forgiving paddle. And two, higher level players will get more power and spin from an elongated shape. 
And three, handle lengths play a big role in the performance of a paddle. Longer handles equals more power and spin. Although I performed this test only using Selkirk paddles, I think we can take these learnings and apply them to any brand or paddle that you're interested in so that you can find the best paddle and shape that works for you. So that's everything I have. I hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching. Forty three. Do you need another ball? Nope. That's it. Hey, do one more. <laughs>